everybody, and welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night. This week, we're discussing 1991's hyper-meta horror film, There's Nothing Out There, which was picked by me! <laughs> uh, so, one of the reasons that I picked this one is I've been, like, on the fence about picking this one for about seven years, uh, because it definitely is more of a comedy than a horror film, but I think with how much we love Scream around these parts it is worth looking at some of the meta films that came out before Scream. So, you know, I've picked Student Bodies in the past and Return to Horror High. And this one is definitely, uh, if it was a more well-known movie, I'd say it was a huge influence on Kevin Williams. But I think it was just two people having very similar concepts of how to celebrate their love of horror with comedy. Yeah. Uh, but, man, I don't know about you guys, but I fucking love this movie. <laughs> I um I will say this. I am going to start. I'm going to be a whistleblower, and there's some conspiracies in horror movie night podcast. And this is my step one. I want the listeners to be aware. I want you to watch this movie, and I want you to understand on the horror movie night conspiracy. If I were to have picked this movie, I would get crucified. <laughs> I wouldn't. No, yes, I would. This would have been a great pick for you because no, it's not no, the no, pastor. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was it was fun. It was it it was okay. I mean it it wears its low budget very clearly on the screen the entire time. Like I mean, it's it part is, of the joke though. Yeah, it is a cheap movie, but man, I love it. I love the so I the movie starts off with this weird dream of a girl being attacked in a video store, and it's it's like this cool excuse to just show us famous slasher movie posters yep mm -hmm. uh but it's fun it's it's dumb but it's a lot of fun and then when you find out it's a dream it makes a lot more sense logically like it actually has dream logic in the entire scene yeah uh, but it's it's a good time the one thing and i think this is maybe why i love this movie so much is that the dialogue especially like when they're riding in the car to go to the cabin it's a group of guys <laughs> and some girls and they're going up to a cabin in the woods and the one character is a huge horror movie buff, and he keeps seeing things and saying, yo, this is a sign. We're driving into a horror movie. And the dialogue is very, very early Kevin Smith. And I think it's because the main character sounds a lot like Dante from Clerks when he talks. <laughs> but the whole time I was like, yeah, this is like heavy Jersey accent, low budget, like shot on almost a camcorder quality film right here <laughs> so um i do have a note that we t skipped uh, over completely the oh my god a fallen cloud when the monster drops out of the sky yeah jay found I love that it. very funny <laughs> what, did, what did did jade enjoy all of the nudity in this movie because like this movie is 50 percent tna yeah, Which, I, she didn't really pay attention. She was on her phone a lot. So so here's the thing that's wild about this movie is that the writer of this movie wrote the film when he was 17 and shot it when he was 19. And the fact that he got that many people to get naked for him at 19 for his movie, his <laughs> little movie is fucking wild because there's no way that he was like able to pay them for that you know no I mean? no well the one girl had a no nudity clause um you can tell because uh it, it, it's but you're right that the if you think about it like almost every single person is at least partially unclothed in a, a full scene in this movie yeah. uh male and female but the the punk stoners which is really funny to me because it's like they are acting like punks and listening to punk music, but they're dressed up like hippies almost. Yeah, yeah. It's, but, it's a weird dynamic. Yeah, but they're like listening to thrash, and then they're like uh, gonna go skinny dipping. Um, and then there's one girl that obviously had a no nudity clause, or was just like, you know what, I'm I'm not showing my boobs for this because <laughs> she's the only person wearing a t uh, like a top. Yeah, yeah there's but Matt, I gotta say, I'm not as surprised as you are that a 19 year old got this many people to get topless because for every picture on Instagram that you see of some cosplay girl with her shirt off is some nerdy 19 year old punk <laughs> that's parents <laughs> bought him a cannon and is like, I'm a photographer. Let me take you naked. And they're like, okay. Yeah. But that makes sense. In 2019 cosplay wasn't that popular in 1989 when this shit was shot. Like I'm saying anyone with a camera 
they automatically can get people to take their clothes off. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Fair enough. I should have carried a camera around a lot more. <laughs> you um, so those stoner people are in the in the lake, and uh, I think his name is Mike, uh, the the horror buff. He just goes. You're trying to tell me we're not in a horror movie? Those kids were born to be murder victims. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that was well, so uh, that makes me actually think that this movie had to have been viewed many times by the writer slash director of uh, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, because there's a part where Leslie Vernon, he goes, oh, and over there, that's your bread and butter. And he points to these guys and like they're pulling up their pants and they're skinny and like they look like they're stoners, you know, and he's like, look at that. And he starts laughing and I'm like, <laughs> it's it had to have been this so this movie i didn't even know about until which is funny that you're like oh i almost picked it for the last seven years because you haven't talked about it i yeah. because because the biggest reason i wanted to pick this movie is like a pretty big moment at the end that i didn't want to tell you about because then it would ruin the like bizarreness of it uh, but I'll jump right to it because it's not that important. But this movie gets so meta that a character survives by swinging on a boom yes, like stick yes. to get out of the scene. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like it is the most meta shit I've ever seen in a horror film, and it like that alone, I was like, God damn, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, because it it keeps the whole movie keeps building more and more to like, no, this is just a movie. And then that's like the moment where you're like, yeah, no, they are literally just in a movie. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of it, it. It ramps up the craziness. We were talking about the no nudity clause and there's a character named Doreen who I thought maybe had a no nudity clause because there's a full shower scene, scene. Oh, where that's, they're going that's out of their funnier. way. Yeah, they're going out of their way to not show anything. And then like the next scene, she very unceremoniously just drops her towel to be like, come have sex with me. He's like, she goes, how about a quick one? And the guy goes, no, it's dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, something you can hear in Jade and Brian's house on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, but the, it's a little reversed. <laughs> no, I think Brian would still say no, it's dinner time. <laughs> I think your mistake is thinking that Jade finds him attractive. <laughs> oh, that's mean. We went too mean. I'm not going to cut no, it. No, that's, that's funny. Brian has made that joke. I am just yeah. getting a joke. Brian, funny thing so is, we, uh, so me and Jade have been watching The Simpsons before bed this month. We've been watching a different episode of Treehouse of Horror every night. And uh, last night we were going to bed, and I was like, I was like, so I guess you're too tired. She's like, we're not having sex. I was like, I was thinking of the other S word. She's like, <laughs> We can watch The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. That means that you last longer than an episode of The Simpsons because she <laughs> only had time for that. So, yeah. there no, you go. it's it's the fact that she can just lay there and watch The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, she could just lay there <laughs> and the other thing too. <laughs> We're definitely cutting this whole part. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so I've got most of my notes are literally just quotes from Mike. Um, there's one point where he's, he's desperately trying to warn everybody that there's something weird going on. And the person's like, I'm going to go in the basement. He's like, fine. I mean, if you're going to make a fuck up, why not just go all the way? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, here's the thing is that you're missing the part where the Brazilian girl who is hilarious, uh, she was originally going to be a nerd. Right. Yeah, and, and then the actress actually was from Brazil and they're Brazil. like, I don't know, foreign exchange student. Then. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very um better off dead. Yeah. <laughs> um but I love the fact that the uh when she's getting chased by the monster, it steals her skirt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so the so there's a lot of lines that like one of the other lines that I like from Mike that's a little bit more uh sincere in its comedy is when they're like so are you really trying to tell us that there's something out there in the woods and then there's like a loud bang in the house he's like or possibly in our house right <laughs> like, uh but yeah i like the you mentioned the creature let's talk about the creature because i'll tell you one thing i like the simple creature design but I love that it has laser eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I actually have a note in all caps. It has laser eyes. But they're <laughs> only effective on eyes. Yeah. You can block yeah. it with your elbow. Or, or sunglasses. Or sunglasses, yeah. 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 Dude, the face that he's making in the back of that car when he's just wearing the sunglasses and lasers are just deflecting on it is like this weird level of pride that can only be seen to understand. <laughs> it's It's 
You know what it reminds me of in the Breakfast Club when Anthony Michael Hall, right? One, the- yep, one hundred percent. When he gets stoned and he's wearing the sunglasses, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. And so the other thing that's so the creature design, like I said, simple but it works. The other thing that's simple but works is their very low budget face melt that happens. Oh, the uh, face melt is sick. It's like yeah. the, it's you know how they did that, right? It's. I'm assuming that's one of the ones where you make the head and then it's just like blow dryers on it so that it. Yeah, melts there's this slowly. jelly that you yeah. or like. It's like a Jello mold, basically that that you put. <laughs> it's it's so fun. I love it. But before <laughs> that, there's a part where um, I, I yeah, it's right before the face melt where they <laughs> where the uh, alien is grabbing at them from around a tree, and I wrote a, a fake headline. That said, alien foiled by local teen who tied its arms around tree. Which, <laughs> yeah. Because first of all, those arms aren't long enough for that. But, but yeah. second of all, it's just so comical. Well, the, I, arms, the arms are very much a throwback to Octoman's arms. Honestly. <laughs> like they're just these very loose, loose limbs that are flopping around. Yeah, I love how stupid the, the monster is. <laughs> I love it. It's basically a frog's face with arms. Yeah, that's it. It's a yeah. It's just a frog with tentacles. Um, so, j- so there's a scene right after the face melt where like they are really ramping up Mike's like sarcastic deliveries. So he's there with the two girls, and they're like, "Wait, where's Jim?" And he's like, "Oh, Jim. Jim's just melting right now in the other room." And they're like, "Well, we got to get out of here." And he goes, "Well, we don't know anything about this creature except that it, like everyone else, hates a mouth filled with shaving cream." (laughs) (laughs) And they're like, like, "This apex predator is getting fucked by the most mundane defense mechanisms, like the (laughs) the mouth full of shaving cream, get its arms full full, uh, tied around a tree, someone's swinging on a boom mic to escape (laughs) it." Uh, But then there's also I forgot about this. So the one girl who got the laser eyes into the eyes, now she's kind of possessed by this frog monster Mm -hmm. and she goes cuckoo, cuckoo, crazy pops. And (laughs) the girl decapitates her with a fucking shard of glass out the door. Well, I think that that was kind of like an accident, you know, like I don't think she intended to decapitate her, but I was not expecting a decapitation in this movie. Oh, yeah, it's it's great. Like basically everything that I could want in a goofy (laughs) ass horror movie is in this. And body melts, decapitation. Basically, the two things I care about. Oh, three. (laughs) Rubber suit monsters, decapitations and like some sort of gooeyness. Plus, you know. There's boobs. Um, <laughs> love you, you can cut that. that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like that you wrote that. Yeah, I like that. That's in small font. I know. <laughs> I, I didn't write that note specifically because I had no intention of saying it. But um, the, the uh, oh man, there, there's. I don't even remember. They're running around, and so the main woman, uh, Stacy, she is. This this is pretty mind boggling to me. Is that so? This is an hour and twenty minute movie, right? Yeah, it's short. It's not very long. We we had this recording session is we're doing three episodes and a side episode today. And I think combined all three movies were just barely over three hours. Like it was, (laughs) it was a lot of short watches, which is great. We we don't (laughs) dislike that. Uh, Just get in there, get your jollies on and get out. So, um, but yeah, Stacy, if this movie is an hour and 20 minutes, she was in a bikini running around for an hour of that. Dude, like, and she's such a bad actress that like, she's there fun. Is, I had a really good time oh, no, watching her. No, I like her, but there is when she's running around, there is no sense of urgency in anything. <laughs> like also, it is just a light sprint around the house. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's also ridiculous that she has ample opportunity to put on some clothes. She actually wears the hero guy's jacket for a while and then takes it off for no fucking reason. Yeah. Well, it was weighing her down, Scott. She had it. She had to jog. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. I think like part of me thinks that it's a, it's an intentional joke, but the other one, the other side of me is like, it's so subtle that I don't know if the joke is that she, I, I feel like they should have leaned harder into that joke because that joke is so funny is that maybe like have people offering her clothes or people putting giving her clothes and then her taking them off later for some plot point. Like, I don't know, like this is a really clever movie. 
I think it's a really clever movie. Yeah. And I feel like they could have leaned harder because that joke is so funny to me because instead of just having exposition that's like, oh, why are your clothes falling off or something like that, you just you do something that's even more absurd. Well, in the actress who played Stacy, um, I, I looked her up. This is the only movie she's ever done. She's a musician uh, from Akron, Ohio. Yeah, I, I, she went to University of Akron. She <laughs> yeah. now lives in Florida, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes she tours by Philadelphia. She's hitting all three points. Like, <laughs> uh, but no, that's a. Uh, I thought that was interesting because even her IMDb profile picture is just her like playing a bass somewhere. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, they escape the monster. They pick up the girl from the nightmare sequence. Immediately realize that she's probably possessed by the monster, and just kick her to the curb and drive off to the the end that appears on the screen. Maybe even with a question mark. I shut it off pretty quickly. But that was uh, there's nothing out there. Is there anything that you guys have that we didn't talk about? I I really want you to listen for a second about something here. Because this movie had a budget of three hundred fifty thousand dollars in nineteen eighty eight, yeah, that right. Or let's say that they got their budget in eighty eight and they shot in eighty nine. It sat on the shelf for two years until nineteen ninety one. I don't exactly know what the 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 cha- like the currency change, like inflation between nineteen eighty eight and two thousand fifteen is. Um, let's just say that this is like a five hundred thousand dollar movie, which is a a pretty good budget. I mean, actually it's a bigger budget than the movie shows, but um, let's just say $500,000 in 2015 dollars. Shark Exorcist was $300,000 in 2015. Now I didn't watch Shark Exorcist, but I sure did watch the, the uh, angry send up video about everything that's wrong with it. uh, That somebody posted on the, the Facebook page recently. Um, and I don't I could have we could make a better shark exorcist for a thousand dollars. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the money is going. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I, I also want to say that this movie's budget is too high for what you actually get. <laughs> and I think I read that his parents like remortgaged their house in order to pay for his movie. Wow. Which is I mean Love and dedication for sure. Props no, to that. No, but dear no, God, no. terrible idea. If your son needs money to make a horror movie, do not give him money to make a horror movie. It's just that simple. What if mom, dad, don't listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't say their full first and last names, they won't find it on the Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, why I we have say, no last names. Yeah, this movie did. I mean, launch a career for the director. Not a good career, but, like, you go on his IMDb, and since this movie, he has 63 writing credits and 29 additional director credits. Yeah. So, like, he's kept himself busy. And, and I've actually heard of one of them. movie poster hung up in their one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> 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 hey, one of his movies became one of the uh, eight films to die for in 2007. Which one? Nightmare Man? Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was when I stopped watching those movies, so I can't really speak upon it. But <laughs> if I remember correctly, is Nightmare Man the one with the, the um... fertility mask? The yeah. Fertility oh, mask? man. It is. You remember that episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer where the mask is like taking over people, is possessing people at a party or something like that? Um, Vaguely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. It was I, I, exactly. It wasn't a very good episode of Buffy, which is a, you know, was it a 40 minute long show? I think it was an hour uh, airing. But yeah, it's 40 minutes when you watch them now. Um, it was a rough watch at 40 minutes. It's a lot rougher at 90. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then, what is your guys double feature for good old there's nothing out there? Oh, yeah, I, get to go first. This. I get to go first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Huh. I'm going to go with, I could go with one movie that I have said was like kind of the inspiration, could have been the inspiration for this movie, but I'm going to go with something that is more loosely tied to it. I'm going to go with Cabin in the Woods 
uh, this is just a 90s version of Cabin in the Woods in a lot of ways. Nice. That would be a really good double feature. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so... Calm down. Jesus. You just no! Like... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> You're going to be so pissed when you look at the audio file because <laughs> you peaked four times. Woo! Five. <laughs> All right. So who wants to go next? <laughs> I want Scott. Brian to go next so that I can uh, berate both of you. Shriek, if you know what I did last Friday the 13th. Nice. I think you've picked that once before, I so have. we won't get into it. But man, did we love that movie as kids. Yes, we did. <laughs> All right, Scott, go ahead and berate us and then pick what you think is the superior choice. Oh, I'm not picking a superior choice. I am strictly berating you guys because we've been doing double features for a year now or something, like a long time. And... Both of you fuckers are like, uh, uh, well, I don't, mm, ah, mm, I you don't put any thought into this while we're watching, you're watching the movie? I Listen, think Matt does. I do sometimes, and then other times, like, the other thing that we're recording, I also don't have anything written down for, but, uh, the Patreon episode, I knew immediately what my double feature is gonna be. <laughs> sometimes they come to me real fast, and sometimes it's like, well, I'll do it on the day. <laughs> part of the part of the biggest reason I got in the habit of not talking so much on the show is because once we would start recording when I was doing the six degrees of Beetlejuice, I was like, oh, fuck. And then I would just do it then. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, Scott and Matt talk over Brian. It's like, no, Brian just doesn't pay attention half the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yahtzee is really important. <laughs> It's actually, I wish I was playing games as much as just lost in thoughts. <laughs> You're a special <laughs> child. All right, so Scott, what's your double feature? So I don't actually think that this is what I would do a double feature of, you know? This is just a thought experiment because of the similarities in monsters. But um, double this up with Humanist for the Deep. Ooh, yeah. But I again, can... the the idea of a double feature is that you have people at your house and you're having like a get together, right? You're not just double featuring Home Alone, Lonely Man style like I do. Um, I mean, no, like Megan will be around, but I'm just such a creep that I'm sitting yeah. on my laptop with my headphones on while she's watching like a period drama. And I'm just like watching people get decapitated and goo. And yeah, so um, but yeah, like humanoids is just such a similar concept except for the fact that it doesn't really it's it's not in on the joke you know it's yeah, a it's I'm, a pastiche of creature from the black lagoon but it's not intentionally funny yeah i mean listen the funniest thing about humanoids from the deep will always be that we had an uncle that thought that that was an appropriate movie to gift us at like eight and ten <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, he was a he was a strange guy. I mean, he's still around, but he, he still is a strange guy. Yeah, he used to be, but he he still is. Uh, all right. So, what's one thing that you want to promote the fuck out of? Uh, sh okay. Now I feel un. un <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I, I actually this is a not even a recommend per se. Uh, I just have been running around a bunch, so I haven't gotten to do as much as I wanted to do. So for this one. Uh, the only thing that I had time to watch besides the movies for this episode, uh, for this recording session, was Terrifier. And it's fine. Like, I, I, I don't like I, I don't get either side of the outrage because it's just a very forgettable, mediocre movie. Like, I don't understand the insane praise of it being like this new groundbreaking movie because it's really I, not. I've, yeah, I've seen it a thousand times before. I also wasn't like a guest at how bad it was. I was just like, meh, this is a thing. I would have been way more interested if the movie was about the girl with the mutated face <laughs> doing talk shows. Like, <laughs> like the first five minutes was so much more entertaining to me than anything that involved Art the Clown, which sucks because I really like David, who plays Art the Clown. Yeah. He's a really, he's a sweetheart of a man. But yeah, I couldn't care less. I mean, I might watch Terrifier 2 because they just recently announced that uh, Felicia Rose is signed on to be in the movie. Yeah, I, I'll watch it strictly for her because she's a Again, sweetheart. Another sweetheart. It's yeah. a it's a movie made with a lot of sweethearts in mind. Just but not it's, all in all. it's just very okay. So for me, it's mean. It's very, it's a very mean. mean movie, which is even the stranger because of how sweet uh, pretty much every person that we've met, <laughs> well, <laughs> every actor that we've met from it, 
um, or from now the the franchise it is, it's just like a really fucking mean spirited movie. Yeah, because I know that's that what I, I don't like. Yeah, it's it's just very mean spirited. That's the best way to put it. It it is what it is. Uh, but like I said, the really the first five minutes is to me the best part of the movie. Yeah. Um. But all right, next. Uh, Did I'll, I? Oh, oh, Brian, you want to go? Brian's going to talk. Brian, Brian talk. talk. <laughs> <laughs> I might have nothing because did I talk about skin last week? I mean, mm. we all have it on our bodies, but I don't remember you talking about it <laughs> otherwise. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so me and Jay watched this A24 movie called Skin. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a true story. It takes place in Ohio, Scott. Um, oh, great. It, Something horrible. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's about uh, this guy that... Virtually what happened was he was a runaway. He had he had abusive parents. Um, so when he was 15, he was picked up by this white supremacist movement. Um, and he was like raised on like Ohio's like local like neo-Nazi movement. And um, obvious then as he got older, he started to question their beliefs and not really align with them. And it's just the story of him trying to get out of it. Um, is, and what wait, happened. Is it... Um, is it- a true story? It is. It's a true okay. story. He had tattoos all over his face, and that's why the movie's called Skin. And the and and part of it is he was trying to leave the he was trying to leave them on his own. But since the FBI realized that he was trying to get out of it, they kind of made a deal with him, which was like, "Hey, if you give us information on these people, we'll pay, we'll we could possibly pay for your tattoo removal." Mm. And it just like cuts to and this was two thousand nine when the true story takes place. Mm-hmm. Which I'm assuming was absolutely excruciating pain to get tattoos removed ten years ago, because um, it hurts uh, a lot. Dude, now. it still hurt. It still yeah. hurts. Like Megan yeah. has told me how she hasn't even finished her tattoo removal because it's so painful. Yeah, but it is. I mean, it's a twenty four, so you know it's just like cinematically breathtaking to watch, um, and the story is just really, really good. All right. Interesting. And, and, you know, that just reminded me, I forgot to uh, mention this when we were doing the actual episode, but um, the cinematography and there's nothing out there is actually kind of good. Yeah. For, for like a bunch of like high school and college age kids in the woods, they, they certainly know what they're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really wanted to point that out just because it's not what you would expect. Yeah, and I think this one's free on YouTube because I right was this on YouTube? It was on it Prime. Was free on Prime. Oh, it was on Prime. Perfect. That works even better. I was gonna say Troma. I think has the distribution rights to it, so it might yeah, be they on their YouTube Wait, library no. of releases. Fun fact: Not Troma? to shit on Troma, but uh, don't pay for Troma. Yeah, because they all have their movies it. are on YouTube. Yeah, and Prime. Well, they're on Prime, so you could yeah. pay. You can pay like a monthly subscription, but I have yet to find a Troma movie that isn't on Prime. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you're uh, digging that deep into the barrel, you probably have some other things that you need to work out in your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, but that's the thing. And that's like, again, it, it. I've said it before. I love Lloyd Kaufman. And like, that's one of the big things is that when like YouTube and streaming became a thing, he was very like, hey, we're going to put every trauma title on YouTube for free for anybody to watch it. Because to me, it's more important that people see our movies than people pay us money to see our mm-hmm. movies. And it's like, that's that's like a pretty, I mean, that's his that's always been his philosophy is fighting for the ability for directors to get their stuff out there any way that they can. And to he... not pay actors, you know, there's that too. No, no, no. I mean, look, he, he's, <laughs> he's got, I'm not saying he's a perfect human, but no, he's a total perv too, but we, that's kind of his charm. <laughs> but, but I, I do appreciate that he, he really is probably the biggest fighter for the little guy when it comes to indie filmmaking. As long um, as you're not an actor. <laughs> as long as you're not. Yeah. Listen, that he's getting you something on I the resume. Liked, I, I <laughs> think it's funny. The one thing I give him credit for is he is like my exception to the rule when it comes yeah. to horror. Like I am all about like I am so forgiving when horror is like genuine, and he has openly said in many documentaries like he didn't even watch a horror movie. They were just like we should make a horror movie because they're making money, and he has no love for horror. He just well, started making. Well, horror. that's no. It's even funnier is that they didn't make it because it was making money. They made they made Toxic Avenger because they saw a newspaper article that said horror is dying as a genre, and they were like, oh. "Let's make a horror movie." <laughs> like, like it was almost like they were accepting a challenge. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, all right. So Scott, what's your uh, your thing you want to promote? Well, I 
I, I watched two things, and I want to promote them both. If All right, let's hear makes it. Sense. So, um, I wa- I watched Necrotronic. Um, I love that. I fucking loved it, man. It is just goofy as all hell, but and but it's it's very visually pleasing. It, it's funny. It's Australian humor, so it's it's a good time. But also, uh, there is a lot of practical effects in it, uh, prosthetics, and and full. There's a full body latex and resin suit that someone wears, and uh, it's. It's a really goofy movie that I had a blast watching, um, and I paid I paid to rent it. I guess I don't think it's a free streaming, but I rented it on Amazon, and I I should I should have bought it, but I don't really buy movies. Yeah. And then the other thing is is that I rented the um, FP two, and our boy J Tro Jason Trask past guest, um, and eighties pastiche connoisseur. <laughs> uh did a great another great movie uh matt and i were messaging about it um where we don't love it like we love the fp but i think that it's a really enjoyable watch and <clears throat> um i actually enjoyed the second half of it more than the first half because i felt like once you get past the obvious i mean it's a very obvious movie it 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 does the hero's arc and it's the whole thing, you know, like, but it's got a fun montage where he's working out and, or training, I guess. And, you know, I, I just think that getting to that point was the harder thing. Once it's there, it's just a good time, you know? So I, I would recommend it to anybody uh, if you haven't seen it. Plus, you know, support our guy because he is yeah. such a, such a great guy. You know, it's almost December now. So we're almost done the year. Thank you guys so much. That's our little Thanksgiving. We're thankful for y'all thing. And uh, that was it. There's nothing out there from 1991 is picked by me. You can check out all the crazy stuff that we were talking about at the website, hmnpodcast.com. You can check out all of our social media, our dope ass Facebook page. Scott's killing it on the Insta. <laughs> me on the Twitter sometimes. All at HMN Podcast is all you got to search to bring that shit up. And we are just talking about the Patreon. How about you hit up the Patreon? There's going to be all types of cool shit over there. I love the stuff that we put on Patreon, to be totally honest. So go check it out at patreon.com backslash HMN podcast. We'll be back next week with, uh, I don't even, re- oh, oh, you know, from the non-strategic person. <laughs> next Scott. week, next week we'll be uh, talking about a fork wool. Like made for TV fork wool. <laughs> that, someone, that someone picked out of the blue. I know that they have not seen it yet. If anything that this week happened, they might not even finish it. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I don't even remember what I picked. Yeah, uh, so stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. <laughs>